on BRS TV, we have our ninth episode of the How to Start a Saltwater Aquarium series. In today's episode, we're going to switch out the T5 lighting that's on the aquarium now with some new LED lighting. LED lighting provides a variety of benefits. Uh, Reed, how about you tell us about the first one? Sure. Well, I have had a lot of success with T5 lighting, and it is one of the most affordable ways to light a reef tank. I think the best way to put it is fluorescent lighting looks more like a picture of a reef where lighting sources like LEDs and metal halides have a shimmer that makes it look like you have an actual reef in your living room. I agree. I think the shimmer really completes the look and makes for an amazing tank. You had mentioned metal halide lighting, so I thought I'd mention why we're not going to use halides in this case. Halides end up adding a lot of heat to this system, so we'd probably have to have a chiller on a tank this size. And I try to avoid chillers whenever possible. There are also a lot of other benefits of the LED system that I like that we'll go over in this video. I personally love the ability to tune the colors to exactly what I want the tank to look like. I've used a thousand combinations of different bulbs and it just never seems perfect. With most LEDs, we can tune it to all kinds of different colors. We can even go seasonal for Christmas. Yeah, very funny read. Somehow I don't think the corals would like that setting. So the system that we selected for our tank is the Ecotec Marine Radion. We selected this one because it has a lot of options, it's attractive, wirelessly connects with our Ecotec pumps, and frankly, Ecotec builds innovative, high-quality products. So the Radion is a modular system that covers a two-foot area. Since our tank is three feet wide, this puts us in kind of a weird limbo, where one, the sides would be a bit darker than we might like, and two is a bit overkill. Since we have a healthy amount of corals on the sides, we decided to go with two. So the Radeon comes with uh, some eye hole fittings that you can screw into the top here to hang this system. I really suggest the hanging kit that they have here, which is a little bit lower profile and easier to adjust the lighting system. Typically, you would hang this from the ceiling. However, in our room, the ceilings are much too high, so it really isn't an option. We chose to use these Giesemann wall brackets. They look really sweet, but frankly, they don't come very cheap. Uh, you could probably find some other options at a Home Depot. But again, a vast majority of people would ceiling mount them, and it's what we would do if possible. So we had to decide if we're going to use two separate hanging kits to hang both of our modules or build a bracket to hold them together. We decided to go the bracket route. We'll go show you how we did it. So this is what the finished product looks like. Uh, as you can see, I think it turned out pretty slick. It only cost us about 15 bucks. To make this bracket, we just picked up an aluminum bar over at an Ace Hardware. I think it's about an inch wide and about three quarters of an inch tall. We just cut it to the length that we needed using a hacksaw and drilled some holes in it so we could attach it to the screw holes on our light. We did need to get slightly longer screws as well. The last step was just to get some progressive grades of steel wool so we could polish it up and give it a nice professional look. I think it turned out great, almost like it was made for it. We are even able to route some of the power cords through the bracket to have a nice clean look. So I mentioned before that you can adjust the color on the radions. We're going to do this by using Ecotex program on the computer. So controlling the color output of the radion is actually really easy and one of the things that makes this system so great. You can manually adjust uh, every color right here just by using the slider bars. You can see what a big difference that it can make. But if you like, uh, you can just use some presets and start as low as 5K and just work your way through until you see one of the colors that you might like. As you can see, there are basically every shade of color that you can dream of and uh, it's a really flexible system. One of the unexpected benefits of adding the LED system to the tank was I was able to greatly expand the photo period that the lights are on. Previously with the T5 lighting we had about an eight hour light cycle and because of my long work schedule it wasn't uncommon for the lights to have not turned on yet by the time I left for work and have already turned off by the time I got home which meant I really didn't get to enjoy the tank a whole lot. Now with the LED lights, I got about a 12 hour light cycle and because they slowly ramp up and slowly ramp down, I have a relatively dim lighting period at the beginning and the end. But I get to enjoy the tank in the morning as well as at night, making it more fun and uh, I'm more likely to do my maintenance or notice if anything's gone wrong because I can see what's happening inside the tank 
really, uh, it's made it more fun for me. You can also have a similar effect with T5 and metal halides by turning off some of the bulbs. However, it just isn't the same, and really the bulbs are going to be too bright to run them for 12 hours like you have them. Yeah, the beginning and the end of the photo period are relatively dim, but what I really like is it isn't an abrupt on-off. The effect is really gradual as the lights slowly ramp down, which is not only cool, but I think it's nicer to the fish. The gradual decline in light mimics a real environment much better. This means that we get to see some cool nighttime effects, like uh, watching our fish bed down and find a place to rest for the night. All right, so that about wraps up today's episode of BRS TV. Now, some of you may have noticed that since our last episode, we added some SPS corals and clams to this tank. And because of that, our calcium and alkalinity consumption has gone up. So we're going to switch out our calcium and alkalinity solution from Kelkwasser over to two-part. So in the next episode of the How to Start a Saltwater Aquarium series, we're going to show you how to add a completely automated two-part system. If you'd like to be notified when this comes out, subscribe to our YouTube channel or newsletter. Thank you for watching BRS TV.